Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And with that being said, let's just dive in and let's talk about how much XDC do you need to become a millionaire. Now, I'm going to be talking to you guys about, you know, a few targets. We're going to be talking about long-term, short-term, and conservative ranges on XDC. And I'm going to explain that to you guys in the situation, but um, I just made a video, uh, it was earlier today, where I was talking to you guys about some tips on, you know, crypto and how to get to a point where you are basically, you know, financially free. Uh, now you guys could diversify. I do think that diversification is the key, especially if you are utilizing a lot of capital. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this video, we're going to be talking about just how much XDC by itself do you need uh, to become a millionaire. Now, this asset has been ranging around a pretty good range in terms of accumulation. Uh, we had this nice deep dip down to my uh, levels that I have been awaiting for back in February. It was a perfect time to accumulate. Still is a perfect time to accumulate, especially if you are looking at the overall chart here. Um, I would say that once this does get listed on some exchanges, the value of this asset is going to pu get pushed greatly. Um, I have been really kind of utilizing Bitru. If you guys do want to use my referral link to purchase any XDC, you guys can do so down in the comments below and in the description below. Uh, of course, you guys could use whatever exchange you want, um, but this really isn't on major exchanges. And it's actually a fairly hard coin to get in the US if you aren't experienced in crypto. Um, but Bitru probably is your best bet. Um, now, with this in mind, right, we are really kind of addressing XDC uh, in the same limelight as, you know, XRP, right? We really kind of look at XDC and where could this go in the long term span? Where can it go in the short term span? So in the short term span, I have been really kind of watching XDC closely uh, and really kind of analyzing it from an overall market perspective. Like, for example, you know, if we got into the top 10 currently, we would be sitting at about a one dollar 66 cent per XDC or a market cap of roughly twenty point three billion dollars. Now, this is just at the top 10. Uh, of course, my conservative ranges are a little bit different from most, and we're actually going to be addressing that. Um, but we're going to be talking about the long term perspective on XDC and also where can we range to um, by around like the end of this bull run. So with this in mind, let's dive in and let's talk about, you know, Zinfin for a second. So this thing is probably one of the most overlooked gems in the space. And the reason why I say that is, you know, we're sitting at roughly, you know, almost a $1 billion market cap. Um, and when we look at this thing, it has a ton of partnerships, associations, and alliances with some of the top tier names within this space. We look at R3 Corda. R3 Corda is a massive name. Now, this AIX, uh, this is actually artificial intelligent bonds. Um, I actually did a little bit of a deep dive on this in one of my Zinfin videos. Uh, they are actually going after a $15 trillion market here. Uh, this is an artificial intelligence bond broker, uh, and they are setting their sights on disrupting a $15 trillion market. Now, with that in mind, they are also disrupting a $19 trillion market. Um, if you guys weren't aware of that, they're basically going after trade finance, and they do have a ton of partnerships already set in place for that. Um, but they are also working with um, Abu Dhabi Global Market Admins on, you know, basically use cases within, again, trade finance. Uh, and it's also featured in a ton of articles. But, you know, the thing is, is that we are not on a lot of, you know, very liquid exchanges. And when I say that is imagine if Zinfin was on Coinbase or on Binance or some sort of, you know, major tier one exchange. This thing would be, you know, skyrocketing in value um, because, of course, this is similar to X XRP or, you know, XLM, a utility gem. This is ISO 222 utility gem. It is really kind of focused on enterprise grade use cases around trade finance and things like that. Um, and it is going after trillions of dollars in terms of use case value. Now, also, the ecosystem is much larger than what we actually are led on to see here on the Zinfin website. Uh, if you go to the xdc.org, you can actually learn a lot more about Zinfin. Uh, there's two specific websites. So there's the Zinfin.org and then there's the xdc.org. Um, with this, you can actually see how strong their ecosystem and participants actually are. So the Casterman Advisory, this is the one that I've been really kind of talking to you guys about for a while because Andre Casterman is basically a board member for Zinfin. 
he did work at uh, Swift for over 20 plus years. Uh, he's really focused on, of course, bridging the gap between the trade finance market, which is a $19 trillion market. And really, Zinfin is perfectly positioned to be the name uh, or the main choice within that space, uh, which is going to be pretty large. Now, of course, here's some other participants, as you guys do see. And yes, this is on Flare uh, Networks. When that does launch, that's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens with that. Um, but today, I'm going to be talking to you guys more so and focusing on ITFA, uh, TFD Initiative, and Trade Tech, uh, because this, these three are really centered around um, that you know $19 trillion market. Uh, so we're actually going to be talking about that and addressing that. Um, but for the most part, you guys can see how massive their ecosystem actually is. Um, I'm very excited for the future of Zinfin as we do kind of continue to see this being built out. And I do look forward to seeing the days where there is a lot more exchanges here, uh, more so tier ones, because, you know, we do really need those tier ones, especially if we want to tar target some higher uh, grade target points in terms of price figures per XDC. Now, like I said, we are going to be focusing on a few use cases here, and the only ones that I'm really kind of focusing on is trade finance. Now, here is the XDC utility. Of course, you guys could read about this if you didn't already know about it. Um, I'm actually invested into some of the you know ecosystem tokens too, like XSwap protocol and stuff. Uh, always do your own research with those because they are a little bit you know sketchy, if you will. Um, but I have been watching Trade uh, Phoenix. Trade Phoenix is also pretty large in terms of the trade finance area. A lot of connections within the trade finance market uh, with Trade Phoenix. Um, there's also like DCB Bank that is focused on tokenization uh, with Zenfin. Uh, again, a lot of this is really kind of focused around one specific area, which is again streamlining systems through tokenization. Uh, that is why trade finance or uh, trade finance is a perfect market for uh, Zenfin. Now, again, um, you know I would say do your own research in terms of the trade finance area for Zenfin and really kind of understand why it's going to be so disruptive. Um, I have a few uh, things I do want to break down real quick before we do move on to prices and how much uh, XDC you need. Um, more so specifically just talking about the week that just passed currently. Uh, they are building out some very strong bridges within the Zinfin network to other networks or smart chains in, in general. Like you know the Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, and Wanchain. Uh, which interoperability is great because it does you know allow for a lot more uh, participants within the network to build. And really kind of grow this uh, space more through again interoperability with those networks. Really does provide a lot more value. And then of course a pivotal moment in history Zinfin. Uh, network continues to, its commitment to increase sustainability through blockchain technology so this is a sustainable asset it is scalable um, it has a lot of efficiencies compared to most blockchains uh, which I've done a dive in on uh, in my recent videos on Zinfin if you guys do want to go check them out you are more than welcome to but let's talk about the future ahead so Here's our roadmap for 2022. Uh, we will see an introduction of vibrant state-of-the-art NFT, you know, marketplaces on the network, specializing in short-term form, uh, you know, video NFTs for global brands and content creators. We expect this application to launch with mainstream appeal. Uh, we will steward development efforts for uh, that further enhance the accessibility and use of the network through the next generation UI experience for network technology community and participants. So they're going to continue to grow out the ecosystem. There's a lot more to this. If you guys want to read this, you guys can go check it out. Um, but I'm more so focused on trade tech and things like that in terms of their board advisory, really kind of showing the major potential around XDC. And, you know, we do see our goals is the interest of the XDC network and its diverse participants. The XDC Foundation will continue to support the enterprise and broader community's pursuit of institutional custody solutions, exchange listings and on ramps for XDC, upgrades to the XDC pay wallet and more integrations with industry leading institutional and retail wallets, more staking opportunities for XDC community members as well, um, which, like I said, a lot of this is focused on some very strong development, more so institutional custody solutions. Um, the, those exchange listings are definitely going to add a lot of value to XDC as well. And uh, last but not least, before we get into the price, just mind you, the $19 trillion gap is being fulfilled by Zinfin. We do see here Zinfin's XDC network, the first blockchain company to join the global TFD initiative. And again, when we talk about this, um, so there's not only, you know, a three to five trillion dollar SME trade finance gap that they are trying to fulfill, but we do see here we welcome Zinfin's XDC network to TFD initiative as this enables us to bridge the US 19 trillion dollar trade finance asset class. 
And again, this is through tokenization and digital assets. Now let's talk about the price per XDC and how much you need to hold. I know that I held out on you guys for a while. Uh, I will put a timestamp down in the description below for you guys to really kind of skip to this part. So we look at XDC and we really kind of look at some of these FIB outreaches and the conservative ranges are between 75 to a dollar, 75 cents to a dollar range. And I know that this topping point is going to be a little bit underwhelming for most people, but that's totally fine. These are conservative ranges. These are boring ranges, if you will. Um, but this is a safe bet, in my opinion. I think that we easily can see these targets. Like I said, you know, top 10 would bring it to about $1.66. So 75 cents to a dollar is something pretty conservative. Now, obviously, to make a million dollars off of a dollar, you know, it's going to be a lot of, you know, money that you need to invest in. So when we take a look at this, I actually have a spreadsheet where I kind of broke down a few uh, targets and really kind of backed it with some research. So. We have short term and long term. If you want to play the short term game, it's going to cost you a lot more. If you want to play the long term game, it's going to not cost you that much. When we look at the short term, starting capital is about 58,000 to 77.3K. Now, mind you, if you have that much money and you're going all in on one asset, you are risking a lot. I would diversify if I had that much starting capital to begin with. Um, and then we also see the starting capital non-conservative. So the conservative range is going to allow for you to invest a lot more. It's going to be one that is most likely going to be targeted in terms of those target points. And then the non-conservative range is a little bit, you know, basically non-conservative. It's something that could possibly happen. It's not going to be guaranteed. Now, these target points for the conservative ranges are, like I said, 75 cents to a dollar. I think that this is a safe bet. I think that we could see those targets pretty easily. Like I said, at a dollar, you're, you know, we're looking at about a 12.2 you know, billion dollar market cap at 75 cents. You know, we're looking at about a 9.2. And I think that these levels are something that's going to be easily targeted, especially as we do see more listings and things like that happen. Um, but then we talk about the four to eight dollars. Now, four to eight dollars. Um, is going off of some other market caps that we've seen in this market, specifically the 50 to $100 billion market cap uh, potential for assets. And why do I go off of this uh, target points? It's just because of the top 10 list, or I should say top 25. A lot of the top 25 tokens have hit either 50 to $100 billion of market cap or around that range. Now, if we talk about Zinfin going to $4, that's an upside of almost 70x. And then at $8, we talk about an upside of about roughly 138x or a $97.9 .9 billion market cap. Now, these are, like I said, non-conservative ranges. These are possible. They are not guaranteed at all. Nothing in this market is guaranteed. Even those you know, conservative ranges are not guaranteed. But if we do go off of these levels and we say, okay, well, four to eight dollars is something that could happen eventually, then your starting capital is drastically decreased to about 7.2K to roughly about 14.5K, which is still a decent amount. And this is 14.5K is going off of four dollars, 7.2K is going off of eight dollars. Now, these levels, in my opinion, will be targeted at some point in time, um, but it is, you know, a long game in terms of some of those targets if. Like I said, if we do see them this year, it's not going to be too long. But if we don't see them, you know, it is going to be a longer wait. I foresee, you know, XDC having a large amount of capital uh, flowing into it and having a fairly large market valuation. That's why I also have the long term game here. So the long term game is a bit longer in terms of, you know, waiting for your capital to be realized. But you also see the starting capital drastically decrease. We're talking about 3.7K, $380, and $150. And yes, these are rounded numbers except for the $3,000 one. Um, now, let's talk about this. So long term, we're talking about like 2030 possibly, uh, like around like 2025 to 2030. Maybe, uh, you know, we could see this earlier depending on how fast this market moves. Um, but we look at the market valuation that, you know, Zinfin is really kind of targeting which is of course the 19 trillion dollar market. So we are talking about the 19 trillion dollar market uh, here. So when we talk about that market value, it's just for trade finance. So this is the trade finance uh, gap. 
Now, when we look at this and we talk about 1%, 10%, and 25% market share, this is the price per XDC if we could grasp that percentage of that market share. Now, I know a lot of individuals don't like me utilizing these percentages, but this is the best way that we can kind of speculate and see where the growth of XDC could really kind of lead us to. Now, at about $15.53, so here we have 15.53. We'd have roughly a market cap of a, of 190 billion dollars. Now, is this an is this a too you know unrealistic unrealistic price? No, absolutely not. I think 190.1 billion dollars in market cap is not too unrealistic, especially when you look at the overall viewpoints on this market and where a lot of this market is really kind of leading to. As we do see regulations being spotlighted, we do see mass adoption taking place. I think that this is a fairly conservative range for some of these utility gems in the long term span. Now we talk about, you know, XDC grasping roughly, you know, 10% of this market share, which would be $1.9 trillion in market valuation. Um, now, yes, this is going to take a little bit of time. I mean, we got to think about it like this. Bitcoin hasn't even hit a $2 trillion market cap yet. So we are still kind of looking at this at the long term span. Obviously, this would be a 2,700x. This would turn roughly $380 into $1 million, which is a massive upside potential here. And it does, it's only going to cost you a slight amount, but it's going to be the idea on how long would you actually have to wait to turn $380 into $1 million. It's going to be a long-term span. And I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, it's going to happen overnight. It's going to happen, you know, next year, you know, this year, that year. No, it's going to be a long-term span. It's going to probably be around that 2030 time frame or even later on. And this is taking me to my next one, which is, 25% of that market share, roughly about $4.8 trillion, we'd say. I'm going to just round it to $4.8 trillion. Now, this would be an upside of 6,828x, uh, sitting at about $392. Yes, I rounded that you know, uh, figure, by the way, just so you guys know. At $388, by the way, this would be about a $4.74 trillion market cap. It's roughly around the same figure, um, but when when we look at this, this would turn $150 into $1 million, a pretty good payday, but how long would you have to wait? The way that I look at this, though, okay, on average, okay, we're say, saying the average household income maybe is like, what, $50,000, we'll just kind of estimate it at around $50,000. Um, you work 20 years. Okay, and you have one million dollars. If XDC could grasp that, you know, ten percent market share, and you start with three hundred and eighty dollars and turn that into one million dollars by twenty thirty, in eight years, you just made what a typical household would make in twenty years, in eight years off of three hundred and eighty dollars which I feel like is a low risk investment amount. Of course, it all depends on the typical individual. Um, but when we look at this, these targets, we don't know when they specifically will happen. We could only speculate a little bit. We could only kind of look at what's moving behind the scenes. Are the gears shifting? Is development happening? Yes, yes. But how long do we actually have to wait for this market to really kind of mature to these stages? That's the issue here. I would say long term, you know, we're looking at around like 2025 to 2030 to see, you know, this $15 to $155 range being targeted. Um, I would say about 2035 to possibly even 2040, uh, depending on how fast adoption does happen for us to get to that, you know, $388 target, which it could happen sooner than expected, but I'm just saying I'm being a little bit more conservative here. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.